walking around and knitting. Yes. <laughs> I wish I could knit that fast. <laughs> The mitt slash palm warmers are coming along. I have been knitting both at the same time by using the same ball of wool, but one strand from the inside of the ball and one from the outside of the ball. I have now separated the palm warmers and the ball of wool, so I've got two small um, bits of wool to go with each <laughs> palm warmer. Uh, so this palm warmer, um, I've popped on a holding needle and I will be, uh, you know, knitting that one after I've knit the other one. <laughs> uh, so this is the one that I'm knitting on at the moment. I have done um, the rib stitching, and which is a one by one rib. And I have also done some stocking stitch or stockinette for the palm. Uh, I now want to add a thumb. So there are options. I could add a thumb gusset, a thumb gusset thumb, <laughs> uh, which you kind of, uh, you kind of add on to this area here and sort of thumb comes out uh, but because they're palm warmers I want to make it simple and quick so I'm going to add a hole and how you do that is you I mean I was knitting in the round but uh, what you do is you instead of uh, going in, in the round just a knit stitch a stockinette stitch you start back on yourself with a purl. So I'm doing a purl row and this is going to go all the way around and then when I get to the end I will go back again with a knit. So I'm not going to continuously knit um, and of course this would make a hole. So I've knit about six rows in stockinette where I've knit and purled and I've created a nice little hole here for my thumb and um, the last row you knit is it should be a knit row um, and then you just you're just going to carry on knitting so um, you just pick up from the other side and you start knitting in the round again um, and then hopefully there it is if you pull your first and second stitch kind of tightish uh, you won't get a loose um, sort of stitch at that at that top end which you kind of don't want you don't want loose stitches and just uh, yeah just continue knitting now um, in the round yep there it is you can try on that um, try it on <laughs> and see if that hole is big enough um, and as you can see I've, I've knit a few rows here um, and then tried it on and I mean it's kind of a snug fit actually um, I don't mind it to be fair but uh, you might want it not so snug so maybe eight rows would have been better than six this is a kind of a, a chunkyish yarn so yeah six to eight rows I'd say when you're using a chunky yarn so I'm in the garden, mooching about with my little cat, and I've nearly finished my palm warmers. Uh, I added a different yarn uh, for the rib at the top, uh, which I'll show you in a minute. <laughs> uh, and um, and uh, I'm going to show you how to weave in ends uh, with the join. So I joined this uh, top rib, and that's a different yarn. It's a um, it's 100% um, I think it's the Lima Drops Lima yarn. Yeah, so the cream yarn is Drops Lima, and that's chunky. 
and the stripy yarn is a 50% wool and 50% acrylic yarn um, I don't know what the name is I've lost the ball band <laughs> and um, so I cast on using a cable cast on I then knit about 14 rows maybe with a one by one rib um, and then I knit some stockinette in the round so that was all knit in the round uh, then I knit in the flat to make the hole for the thumb. I knit again in the round, uh, continued knitting around, and then I did a rib for the finger area in the drops lima. So both are chunky yarns, and the needles were a 4mm Adi needle. Uh, and yes, so uh, this could have been a little bit maybe bigger so I did six rows in the chunky for that that could have been eight perhaps that's the only misgiving and bobbles has helped the whole way through now to tie off and weave in the ends the first thing you do is uh, you would tie a knot between the lima yarn and the um, other yarn which I don't know the name of but um, it was a 50% wool and a 50% acrylic yarn so I tie the knot first um, and pull that tight and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to weave in the ends into the sort of the way the knitting is knit if you like so you find the bit <laughs> and sort of weaving it into the color as well so the lighter yarn the creamy color is going to be woven into the cream colored stitches and the other yarn is going to be woven into those sort of brownie stitches I've got so once you've got it sort of in there now <laughs> these are quite short um, ends you can leave them as long as you want so I end up having to pop the needle in then re-thread the needle with the yarn so yeah so you're just following the way the stitch is knit and um, you just continue to do that there it is and follow that one round as well and you just do two or three or four even you don't have to do too many and then you can sort of snip the rest of it off um, and because that's a hundred percent wool that will kind of merge and sort of, if you like, it will kind of bind itself once it's washed a couple of times to the other stitches so it doesn't come out, which is a, a great thing about wool. Um, it will sort of bind. So yeah, so you just knit that, knit it in if you like, or weave it in, um, and then cut that end off and then do the other side. So I want to show you how to weave in the end when you finish your knitting. So I've just cast off and um, I just re-thread the end that I have onto my darning needle. Uh, you pick up the opposite stitch. Be careful not to pick up the under stitch, uh, otherwise you'll get kind of a dip. So um, have it as sort of the um, uh, one of the stitches, that, the first stitch basically that you decreased is the stitch you're picking up. Uh, then what I do is I uh, pull it tight 
and I go back into the previous stitch where I came from and that kind of you know tightens it up and makes it into a knot and then I take the yarn to the back so that I can just weave it into the um, knitting at the back <laughs> basically uh, yeah and then that's it and you just go down the um, if you like, go down the row, rows, uh, just weaving it in. And you can do that two or three times or four or five times, however many times you think, and then just snip it. And as I said previously, um, with knitting, um, it kind of merges a bit with what's already there once it's washed a few times, so it shouldn't come out, it shouldn't come loose. Uh, that just needs cutting off. Uh, and there we have it. So that's, I think, uh, a generally neat edge. I mean, that's how I do it. There might be neater ways of doing it. And this is the um, cast on edge and we've got a tail that needs weaving in so um, I did just pull that tight so first pull it tight yes there is I pulled it again and um, and then just pick up the um, does it stitch from so that's the first stitch and just weave it in and I think um, it might be easier to weave in a uh, the cast on tail than the cast off um, because it's not as evident the uh, step if you like. Um, but it depends. Anyway. So you, you, the way you weave in the cast on is generally the same as the cast off. I mean, I haven't, um, you know, that bit of weaving there. I don't mind it sort of being a different colour on that side, the other side. That is, I'm not going to really be doing anything with that so that's fine if you wanted to weave it in per color then you would weave it in slightly differently so you'd weave it in on the horizontal rather than the vertical and yes the mittens are done they're finished and here they are um, now with the thumbs I could um, put some ribbing around the thumbs if I wanted to but uh, I probably won't <laughs> Uh, and then these are on the other way round. So as you can see, they're kind of versatile. You can uh, have the ribbing, that light coloured ribbing as the wrist part or the, the finger part. So that's kind of totally up to you. Hooray for fingers. So I have some of this lovely finesse King Cole cotton silk DK yarn. Uh, it's beautiful, it's soft, uh, really lovely to knit. And uh, I had knit, uh, I had started on a top and I kind of got fed up with it, a lacy top. So I'm taking it apart and I will be knitting something else but actually I think I'm going to be doing a crochet project with this um, so hopefully you'll see some of this in future episodes <laughs> I've got to unravel that bit first um, the second project I want to work on is with this yarn I bought at Hobbycraft in a sale um, it's really lovely and cheap it's probably bag making yarn or something it's a cotton and a viscous yarn really lovely shiny soft yeah but uh, I don't want to make a bag with it I'm going to be making a pair of socks summer socks is what I'm thinking cotton and viscose bound to be nice and cool for the summer so that's my idea uh, this yarn very cheap as you can see two pound fifty one pound twenty five in the sale um, yeah but there you go it's cotton and viscose I don't know if Hobbycraft have any more of it because I bought these a while ago. They've been in my stash for a while. So upcoming socks in further episodes. I mean, I'll have to see how it knits. It looks a bit splitty, so we shall see. But yeah, future yarn projects, hooray.